All right, all right, all right. Welcome in H Town World. This is the Solid Grip coming to you live at five. No time for jive. Look here, relax your rear and allow us to soothe your ear. And while you at it, while you're doing that, we want you to like, comment, and subscribe. Okay, go right on over to YouTube and put in the Solid Grip. Like, comment, and subscribe. We got many videos on there for you to check out. Also, check us out on Twitter. Okay, at twitter.com, that's backslash solid underscore grip. Okay, we're doing things out here, y'all. Get with us, help us come up in the game. Okay, first off, everything all right? All right, first off, Pop Man, how you doing over there? Doing good, Rich. That's good, man. I'm feeling real good over here, man. I had a real busy day today. I mean, I got up early this morning, man, and, and washed the dog and you know, after that, man, I just, you know, started, you know, putting a whole bunch of chores in line, man, getting things done, man. But uh, I, I, this day has been very productive, man. But anyways, man, let's jump straight off into this thing. Today is July the 11th, okay, 2020. Now, everybody knows that this year has been crazy, okay, with the coronavirus, with people dying left and right, contracting the virus left and right, opening up businesses that had been closed down for a long time uh, and closing them back down and people receiving checks and buying everything for them and their mothers on Amazon, eBay and other outlets or uh, apparatuses that are used to get things delivered to your home. And it's been a crazy year, Pop. But the one thing that has been the craziest of the most of uh, most of all is the one thing that we keep dear to our hearts, which is sports, man. OK, and we have been deprived from sports for the last four months. But now it seems that these things are starting to come and unfold right before our eyes. And baseball is back, Pop. OK, yesterday the Astros played an inner squad game. OK, Justin Verlander was on the bump. Also, Lance McCullers was on the bump. And from what we heard, and I wasn't able to see the game, game that was supposedly streamed live on Twitter, uh, on the Astro Twitter page, but Justin Verlander, man, hit four innings, okay? No hits, no walks, okay? No runs. He gave up one, uh, uh, somebody got on base because of an error. Other than that, he looked like Cy Young, Justin Verlander, the Justin Verlander we know and need to drive this ship relative to pitchers for the Houston Astros. And also Lance McCullers got on the bump and now he struggled a little bit, but he was able to get his footing. You're talking about a guy that's coming back from Tommy John surgery, looking good, throwing hard and only gave up uh, one run in the first inning, but really did well. Pop, how excited are you to have sports back baseball in particular? There's no doubt about it, Rich. And, all those pundits out there that think the Astros are not going to be good, or there's some type of carryover from the 2017 season when they got caught cheating. I'm sorry, baby. They got three premier pitchers, okay? And good pitching stops good hitting. Right. You got a you got a great old manager, experienced, and trust me, he's going to get these young horses together. And, hey, man, they're going to make a run at it. Okay. Now, I'm a Yankee fan through and through, okay? Everybody who listens to this show knows that. But do you, if you think the Yankees are just going to walk away with this thing, we got another thing coming, guys. It, it may be the Yankees in the end, but, hey, do not. I'm going to say that again. Do not count the Houston Astros out of it because they have great pitching. And, hey, guys, I haven't even mentioned the hit yet. One through seven, they're as good as anybody in the league. Yeah, you know, I to be a Houston Astros fan, definitely we have a talented team. I mean, mostly multifaceted in all ways that you could talk baseball. But, man, the Yankees are nothing to play with. I mean, you think about this. I know that we won the ALCS last year, but, man, y'all was a couple of hits away from going y'all selves. And y'all got a lot of young guys on that squad, man. And, they, man, your at-bats are just crazy. I mean, if – the only thing really that kept y'all unbalanced last year was Aaron Judge, okay? He was not the hitter that he was, um, you know, two seasons prior when he hit, I believe, 52 bombs, okay? And 
if you would have had him hitting just a, a fraction of what he was hitting before, also superstar Jean Carlos Stanton, who y'all are playing paying an arm, leg, two toes in a earlobe for, um, hadn't played much at all. Okay. And if he had been in the lineup, man, we would have been in some real trouble. It ain't no doubt about that, Pop. And I, I think that we have something to look forward to uh, in the upcoming days with baseball being back. And I could not be more excited. You know, we talked about before who we thought would win it all. And right now it's really up in the air, especially not knowing how things are going to go or what direction things are going to go in with the coronavirus spiking again. So. What do we do, Pop? What do we do with sports? Should sports really still be going on? Or do we, what do we do, man? Do we look forward to it? Do we think it's really going to be like a regular season? How do we deal with this? Rich, just like with anything in life, we're going to take this thing one day at a time, okay? Right. Today we may be good and then things go looking good. Tomorrow we wake up, five guys may have tested positive for the virus. So we, we, we don't know, man. We, re we really truly don't know. We just got to thank God for every day we wake up and hope that there's a tomorrow. So same thing with baseball, same thing with all sports, okay? Nobody really knows where this thing is going, where it's coming from, and, and, and when we'll get a vaccine. So, hey, the fact that we're talking about baseball or an Astros in a squad game today, hey, thank, we need to thank our lucky stars. Yeah, man, I'm I'm excited nonetheless. I don't know. No one knows what's truly going to happen, but the anticipation and, and the suspense of knowing that sports is right at our front doors once again, you know, the elation that I have is just, it cannot be measured. And I hope all goes well. I hope that they really, truly treat these things well as they should, as far as the coronavirus is concerned with safety and everything of that sort. So that we can actually get back to enjoying the game. Not like, man, you know what? They had a really good game. But, man, what if Verlander caught the virus, man? Then we don't have him in, in the pitching lineup. Or what if George Springer, man, catches the virus? Then we don't have him hitting bombs. Or what if what if Aaron Judge catches the virus, man? Then he's down again another year. You know what I mean? It's just it's, whew, it's hard to deal with right now. But it still is before us, man. We still want to see it happen. And hopefully they, they are safe. They are as safe as they possibly can, and things can move forward the way that we would like them to do so. So we will uh, segue into another sport, okay? And right now, also that's coming back with Major League Baseball is the NBA, okay? It is right upon us. But there are some, you know, strange things going on in the NBA, much to talk about, but there's one thing in particular that I would like to, you know, point at. And right now, the Houston Rockets, they have landed with many other teams in Florida. They're at the bubble, but there's a problem, Pop. There are two individuals, particularly the stars of the Houston Rockets in Russell Westbrook and James Harden that did not show up on the plane. So now they're not at the bubble. So I got what I feel like what happened, but I'm going to ask you first, where in the world are Russell Westbrook and James Harden at? Where they at? Well, well Rich, you think possibly they could have the virus and they, they, nobody's telling nobody about it and they somewhat in some hospital and stuff and uh, uh, being quarantined somewhere. Could, could that possibly be it? I, I don't know, man. I know they practice with the team here in Houston and stuff. So, I really don't know, man. What, what's your theory? This is what I think. James Harden and Russell Westbrook are two of the most paid NBA players in the NBA. Okay? If you think about all those crazy, goofy, eccentric-looking outfits that both of them wear, okay, that are skirt-like, Dress like short suits, you know what I mean? Suits with shorts and, and real pointy shoes and overalls with, with leather shirts, you know, all that kind of crazy stuff that they be wearing. They need suitcases on top of suitcases on top of suitcases, okay? So this is what happened. Remember what I said first. These two are two top play, paid players in the league. They got a private jet. They got a PJ. OK, ain't no doubt in my mind. They got a private jet. They know they will be locked in for four months. OK, 
you're talking about one James Harden who can't stay out the strip club. Okay, let's just be <laughs> for real. Okay, I ain't in the strip club, and I know how often he's in there. Okay. <laughs> So you talking about somebody, not just him, it's many other NBA players who are used to having multiple women nightly, okay? Do as they please. You're talking about being locked up in a bubble for four months, okay? Not having anyone to have relations with. Now, let's be clear. They're going to break the rules, okay? They're going to break the rules. There are some players whose wives are coming and they got to go through the whole pre-screening and everything like that. But you best believe money talks and bleep walks. OK. And with that being said, you're going to have. Harden, uh, not Westbrook, he's married. OK, married. But you're going to have Harden bringing in the honeys. OK, <laughs> he's going to be bringing them in, but maybe does not know how he's going to do that right now. So, hey, man, let's get a private jet. A matter of fact, I'm going to get a private jet. You can come with me, Russ, if you want to, okay? But, man, I'm telling you right now, it's going to be a bordello up in the air. You understand me? So I think that it has something to do with that. Now, I heard something funny said on Sports Radio 610 that they feel like Tillman Fatita is in the air with them in this, you know, airplane bordello, you know, full of women, man. And I, I thought that was funny that that was said. But I don't think that they have the virus. No, I don't think that they have the virus because I think that they're going, they have something in place. I haven't read, you know, the 110 page, you know, uh, rules that they have for the NBA, but I'm sure they have something where they're going to quarantine the player for a certain amount of time if he contracts the virus so that they can keep things going, Pop. Okay, Rich, I will accept that, but hey, yet to be seen. They've got right. to show up, I think, by Friday and stuff to be eligible to play. So it's going to be very interesting this week if those guys make it their own time because, hey, man, you can fly around the world 50 times in five days. So, right. hey, you know, come on, guys. Let's get to let's get to the bubble. Let's, let's make a run at a championship. Your general manager done put the coach out there and stuff and, and told the whole city of Houston he think we can win a championship. I think you guys probably need to get on to the bubble. Yeah, I think so, too, Pop. And we'll see what happens with that, what transpires with that. I don't think that they have the virus because I think that they're just dealing with that differently. If you see how people are dealing with it, they'll say things like they're not able to make it because they have a condition that keeps them from doing so. They can't actually say the name of what the condition or, you know, what it might be, but they can say they have a condition. That's the same thing that Dusty Baker did for uh, uh Alvarez and for Jose Urquidy. So I don't think that that is the thing, but we will see what happened. We will see what happened. So let's segue into another sport, a sport that we don't often talk about, but it is a sport that I enjoy. Okay. And for about four or five months now, you really have not had uh this sport in full effect, which is golf. Okay. You've had people on the field playing okay you've had little tournaments but they've had to shut it down too because even in that and you would think how you guys gonna catch the coronavirus you so spread apart but people go <laughs> home to their spouses they go to different places the caddy is right next to the the golfer the whole time so he could he could have uh he could have the virus and be asymptomatic give it to him who knows right this thing is spread in the way that it wants to spread but tiger woods pop he has announced that he is returning back to the PGA Tour. What are your feelings on that? Well, Rich, ever since Tiger came out of his, his long, long slump mm -hmm. and won the Masters, I think it was a year ago or two years ago, right. I have been predicting he's going to break Jack's record. Now, he's Ooh. had his ups and downs, okay? But I was very excited to see, I think it was him and Peyton Manning that, that beat Phil Nicholson and, 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 and your boy from New England in, yeah. that, in, in that match that they had. No at, doubt. Least, at least the competitiveness of the Tiger Woods is still there. If he can somehow find his game, he can play at least another five years. But he still looks good. I mean, yeah, he's had the back problems and he's had the knee problems and stuff. 
but he still is his body still looks good okay and, right. and, and like i say man hey he's only he's only three away i think he's 13 i think uh he has 13 jack the record is 16 and stuff and so hey i'm pulling for tiger you know i think he's kind of had a metamorphosis in his in his career and stuff i mean the things that he went through and stuff with his wife and all the other things and stuff i'm pulling for him i hope to see him back on the links he he is back in effect have you seen this cat he he is yoked he's back he's back he's doing things and he's really really getting his short game back together and his drive now he can't drive it like he once did 20 years ago pop okay. but his drive is decent his short game has gotten better his body feels better he's in a stable position he's back they better watch out okay because he is coming back with the vengeance okay so with that being said um you know we're going to segue once again uh back into the sport that we love the most i think that i could say that for the both for both of us which is football okay so the uil okay and uh if y'all don't know really this is this has to pertain to high school football okay for the most part they are to restart on monday but we still have this resurgence of the coronavirus pop. So I don't understand how they're going to start back up and just not have the, they're going to have to shut right back down in another couple of weeks, huh? Rich, in honor of all my coaching brothers, that's the reason I have on this hat and these glasses, okay? Because it is going to be extremely, extremely warm this week, okay? Right. And with kids returning from a two and a half week high season, I think it's a perfect storm. Now I am hoping and praying, okay, that that no school district, no school in the state of Texas or anywhere have a a a, a huge spike in this virus. But it's almost inedible, Rich. I, right. mean, I mean, it it really truly is, man. And so, you know, I mean, they're gonna make us wear a mask, okay? I mean, on the field, only time a uh, a kid don't have a mask on if he's actually in a drill and right. stuff. But now we're going to be making contact, man. And so how can you stay away from it? I think if the UIL put it off, put it off until August, the 1st of August, I know for sure people are wearing masks. I've, I've been out there and people are wearing masks. And so we're going to start to bring that curve down. But we don't have to rush nothing. Guys, we don't have to rush nothing. That's what we that's the mistake that Texas and Florida and California. They rush too quick. We move too quick to open up the economy. And now look where we are today. So in honor of all my coaching brothers who've been laying in the bed at 8 o'clock, you got to roll out at 5.30, baby, hit that field and stuff. And like I said, I hope and I pray that this, the number of positive tests that we have are at a bare, bare minimum because, hey, man, you got a lot of, and myself, you got a lot of older coaching brothers out there, man, you know, and brothers that, hey, I know I'm going to be staying clear, clean. I wouldn't bought me another face shield today, and I would have it on, okay, along with yeah. the mask, okay, yeah. and I would have my hand sanitizer in my pocket, okay, and I'm right. not going to get close to nobody, all right? So, like I said, I wish they would put it off. They're not, but uh, we're going back to work on Monday, Rich. All right, man. And in this last last segment, man, I want to get something else in here, man, that is very, very, very important. Right now, just as the Carolina Panthers were for sale just a couple of years ago, 40% of the Washington Redskins, or as you say, the Washington Red Tails, okay? That would be a wonderful <laughs> name for them. <laughs> you keep on pushing that, man. Look, y'all make Pushing sure y'all change it to the Red Tails. Y'all give my old man 1% of all <laughs> beer sales, okay? But yeah, so yeah, with that being said, man, 40% uh, of it is for sale. And you and I talked about this off the air, and there are individuals that probably will step up. But here's an opportunity for black ownership, okay? Yep. Yep. There's a huge movement. Everyone knows about it, okay? It's not just yep. Black Lives Matter movement, okay? That's not the only thing, uh, you know, that is driving this thing. But there is a movement for equality. So right. now that there's an opportunity 
What are we going to do, Pop? Who needs to step up? Tell me. Well, I mean, come on, man. You, you, you got some billionaires out there, Rich. Yeah. Uh, uh, Jay-Z and his company, Rock Nation. Right. You, you, you got uh, uh, the, the, the millionaire from Arizona, uh, Bob, is it Simmons or Williams? Uh, they, they pay for the kids to watch and stuff. Big in there, right. Oprah. I mean, right. Oprah. Oprah, you don't have to be a red skin fan, Oprah, to yep. buy 40 percent of the team, okay? Right, right. And then, and, and, and then, hey, that's KD, you know, KD's got his own foundation, he's a red skin fan, you know, maybe, maybe you can't get 40 percent, but what about 20 percent, you know? Yep. So, I would love to see now. We, we're talking that noise, Mitch. You know, three minority coaches, two general managers, and no owner. Yep. Look, when Michael Jordan bought the, 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 the Charlotte Hornets of uh, Bobcats, he did not buy a majority. He owns the majority. Now he bought a minority and right. later on became the majority owner. So right. hey man, if I had the dough, I would be I would be all over that. So I I know there's not a lot of billionaire uh blacks. In this country and stuff, but there are about ten. And hey, if I'm in that group, if if I am in that group, uh, uh P Diddy, uh, you know, some of you guys, uh, uh, hey, I would I would be all over that, man, because that's something that you could have for generations and generations and generations. Yeah, man, that is wonderful news to see. That we'll see who steps up. I don't know if anyone will. I don't know if anyone wants to buy Washington, especially what they got going. But we will definitely see about that pop. Hopefully somebody does step up and really see that, hey, like you said about Michael Jordan, he started out as a minority uh, owner and then can become a majority owner. So we'll see how that pans out. So right now we want to transition into what we call the solid grip says we coming to you with rapid fire. OK, now, one of the things that I wanted to discuss in these solid grip says was there was a wonderful conversation that took place between my quarterback, our quarterback, everybody's <laughs> quarterback. OK, Houston Texans Deshaun Watson had a interview with a uh, former star, OK, NBA all star in the NBA in Carmelo Anthony on Carmelo Anthony's podcast, which is, okay. I believe, called What is in Your Cup? OK. And there was some interesting things said. It was a pretty long um, part, you know, segment. It was about 45 minutes or whatever. And we're not going to uh, play the whole thing here. But there was one thing that was played here, Pop, that's very interesting that I would like you to hear. And then we can go ahead and confabulate about it, man. So, um, you know, right now is uh, obviously I'm trying to pull it up and it ain't acting right with me. So here it is right here. Okay, give me one second. I'm uh getting in here. But this is a very interesting thing. Um, and I think that you know, this is something that needs to be talked about more often. Uh, but here it is. We got our quarterback from the Houston, Texas talking about it with Carmelo Anthony. This is what he said right here, Pop. Is there pressure for you being a black being a black quarterback? It is, honestly. Yeah. I, I never, I never necessarily came out and said that, um, but it's definitely pressure. Um, I definitely got to carry myself in a, a different way, um, especially in the in NFL as a black quarterback, um, to try to, you know, make sure that I meet the standards that I need to, to meet. And I necessarily shouldn't have to, because I feel like we all in the same position. We all doing the same thing. I'm out on the field every Sunday. I'm picking up the same numbers every, you know, these white quarterbacks are doing. But at the same time. Definitely, you know, at the end of the day, they're going to look at you the color of your skin and the, the way I was raised, the people I was raised with. And so sometimes, you know, you got to move a little bit differently. You got to watch what you say and talk a little bit more proper, uh, because sometimes, you know, when I'm with my boys, I don't I don't talk that way. They don't talk that way. They don't understand that lingo. So, you know, when I'm in front of the camera, I'm in, you know, this environment, you know, the way I want to talk and I'm normal talk, talking normal. I can't talk like that. I got to make sure that, I, OK, I'm you know, soon time this way, I'm sitting straight up, I'm looking at eye, which is, you know, everyone should be able to do that. But at the same time, it's still something that I wasn't used to growing up. So I got to get out of my comfort zone or what I'm comfortable with around my homeboys and my, you know, my family and then move to that you know, other side. Exactly. So, Pop, uh, did you hear everything okay right there? 
Yes, sir. So, you know, I thought that was extremely, extremely telling because one of the things that um, is not talked about a whole lot is the whole disposition with uh, racism and social injustice. And that is something that's very true to African-Americans. I grew up uh, in a predominantly African-American neighborhood. OK, it was African-Americans and it was Hispanics. OK, now some of the schools that we were zoned to, you had white people there. You had a diverse set of individuals there. But there is a lingo all black men know it you know it right when you see a black man in the store you can nod your head up like that or nod your head down like that or be like hey what's up boss i'll be like hey uh you know what's going on man uh you can say something of that nature and you just you understand the lingo you i don't care if he's a proper talking suburban so you know what i'm saying black dude or a black dude that is from a disenfranchised neighborhood there is just an unspoken language that we speak with one another that we understand and with that in our culture and trying to explain that and why we have that is difficult. And you see there that Deshaun Watson feels pressure, you know, about the things that he says and does with other black individuals, because we have this culture, we have this lingo, this way, these colloquialisms that we use with one another that, may not be understood or may not even be accepted by black people for white people to say, uh, which can uh, have some form of hypocrisy, but nevertheless, that's what happens. But you see the pressure was felt there, man. How does that make you feel to hear a black quarterback in the NFL say something like that? Well, Rich, I, I took it a different way. I think number four understands that he is not only becoming, but he is the face of the franchise. He has right. to do things a little different. He has to talk a little different. He has to walk right. a little different. Now, when he's in his house and him and his boys are together, they, they're slapping some bones. Yeah, he may say anything. But when he walks right. out this house, the cameras are on him. Paparazzi are on him. And there's right. no doubt in my mind. And see, I don't want him to experience or have to experience the same things that Warren Moon experienced, okay? where his wife was in the, at the Astrodome and they were calling her the N-word and stuff like that, okay? I know that someday Deshaun will get married, but by that time, he'll have a hold to this city. He'll have them in the palm of his hands, like Earl Campbell did, like Akeem Olajuwon right. did. And when he walk in a building, people will honor him as the man, the face of this team, Rich, right. you know? And so I, I understand it. I, I understand yeah. it. When, when in, in 1970, when the schools integrated all over the country, I realized then, man, that hey, I had to change myself. We're at the white school now. I got to walk a little different, okay? Right. The, the the lingo and stuff. I could talk to the boys, but not, the principal called me in the office along with some of the other key athletes and said, "Mr. Wilson," he said, "Mr. Wilson, hey man, you one of the leaders on this campus." There have been fights all over the place. We need you to help pull this campus together. And yeah. at that time, Rich, I understood that my role had changed, man. You know, it wasn't Jimmy Wilson, though. It was Jimmy Wilson. At, at some point, man, I became a, 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 a pre king if you understand what I'm talking about. Right, right, right. Hey, man, I had to change the way I talked. I had to change the way I walked, you know. They looked, at, looked for me for leadership. And so, and so that's the same thing that's happened with number four. No disrespect to number 99. He's been the face of this organization for a long time. But the torch has been passed, baby. And number four <laughs> has reached and got it. No doubt. No doubt about that in my mind, Pop, man. Wonderful, wonderful show. Great things, man. We talked about it. It was sizzling hot, man. I appreciate you so much, man. I'm telling you, this show, man, has really brought us closer, man, and you know, just really able to build that relationship between father and son. Everyone out here who has an opportunity to view this show, we want y'all to like, comment, and subscribe. And I didn't put on there, but I want you to ding that little bell, okay? So y'all don't miss anything that we got coming. Also, check us out on twitter.com backslash solid underscore grip, okay? We are coming to you live at five as much as we can to give you our expert analysis. So for me, J.R. Wilson, along with Ping Wilson, my father. We are the solid grip. We thank y'all for tuning in. Y'all take care.